It is a beautiful day for some feats of strength. Thank you for joining us, everybody, here at the 2022 Arnold Sports Festival in Columbus, Ohio, for a day of rogue record breakers. I'm Sean Woodland with Dr. Bill Crawford, and we are in for a treat today as we have several feats of strength and some athletes who are going to be looking to set some new records in them. We are going to start with the women's elephant bar deadlift. We have three very powerful athletes who are going to be going after the record of 621 pounds. I'm really excited by this event. A couple of years ago, we got to see women go over 600 pounds, and that is, to us, was shocking. Here we are, we've got some athletes who have been training for a couple of years, and I'm sure we're going to see a bigger weight. 621 is the target. Get above that, and you're the new leader. We're just going to go rounds. This is not a rising bar system like we would see in a strongman competition. Uh, each woman will come out, lift, and then decide if she wants to try and lift again and go after that 621-pound record that is currently held by Andrea Thompson, and she is in the field here. Now, let's talk about that elephant bar. It is much different than deadlifting on just a regular barbell that most people train with day in and day out. Yes, it is. Well, one, it's longer. So it's uh, 9 feet 7 inches long. It weighs 65 pounds, so it's about 20 pounds heavier. It's not stiff like a regular barbell. There are deadlift bars that you can purchase that have a little give into them. But being this long, it actually makes it hard to control that whip. So those are the differences with a deadlift bar versus a regular bar. Andrea Thompson will be our first athlete out. Again, she is the current record holder at 621 pounds, and she's going to open up at 576. And this is after competing all weekend in the strong man, <laughs> a strong woman. I mean. She's a world-class strong woman and did a fantastic job when several of the events uh, slipped on the bag over bar and ended up coming second overall, but had a fantastic weekend. And here she is trying to set her deadlift world record. That is fantastic. She's coached by our own big laws, and she has some really good training lifts. I've been told that she's exceeded this in training with a regular bar, not the elephant bar. But again, this is different. On the platform, on the day, with this implement, you've got to control that whip. But I think if you step on the stage, you're out to win. Well, we've already seen some great moments on this stage over the past two days, not only in the Arnold Strongman Classic, but you think back yesterday to uh, the first Rogue Record Breakers event that we had, and Chloe Brennan stealing the show at 140 pounds, lifting those Denny Stones, as there is Andrea Thompson, who's your current uh, record holder getting set for her first lift. But that was a fantastic moment. Probably the, the best moment that we saw she stole uh, all the weekend. Show. She, weighed, she lifted basically five times her body weight, and she did it without straps. It just shows the kind of parity that, that women have had. I was talking to Dr. Jan Todd last night, the true pioneer in women's strength sports. And she said, you guys have had centuries to get to this place, and women have only had maybe 20 years of some good focus on them, and look where they've come. And this is what happened yesterday on the stage here at the Arnold Sports Festival. 140 pound Chloe Brennan lifting those Denny Stones and the reaction was priceless. And we were checking in on her Instagram because we put her Instagram handle there up on the screen. And I don't know how many she gained, but at one point she was at 17,000 followers. When I checked it, it was at 22,000 followers. Uh, Rogue Fitness posted the shot of her lifting the Stones, the, the CrossFit Games account posted it. Uh, that is going to be a poster up in a lot of gyms. 1.6 million total views. That was a shock for everybody. She became a star instantly. You know, when she came out and she sat herself up, uh, you know, when she first walked out, nothing against her, she was very slight. Right. But she had some raised shoes, and I said, you know, she's a little shorter, so she's going to really try to have a little extra distance. And then when she set her hips up, and locked her hands in. I said, who's coaching her? Something's <laughs> going on. Yep. As soon as she did that, and she broke, she kind of started breaking one of the stones off, and we had a shot at it, and she did it legitimately. Unbelievable lift. I have found out since then, talking to her, she's actually lifted the Denny Stones in Patark before. Mm -hmm. Impressive performance. You saw Lauren Chalet on the, your screen a second ago. He was up here on the desk with us over the past two days. A lot of fun working with him. And it's going to be a lot of fun watching him uh, go after a record. He's going to go for the Denny Stone Walk for Distance uh, later on today. But up first is the women's elephant bar deadlift. Andrea Thompson getting set to make her first lift. 536 is what the placard says on the floor. I expect this to so be we a have made, routine lift, Sean. We've made a, we made a switch, actually. Rebecca Roberts is going to go first at 536, and then 
Thompson is going to come out at 576. So Rebecca Roberts is up first. Rebecca Roberts was. Okay, she's going to set up. She's got a kind of a narrow stance, takes a narrow stance. She's going to put. Oh, very routine. And that is no it. problem for Rebecca Roberts. Easily done. And she was one of the women who attempted to lift the Denny Stones yesterday. So that was a pretty routine lift for her. I would say that uh, she has a more narrow stance. A little more narrow stance with her feet and her hands. A little more of a powerlifting deadlift. She's not using straps. She's just going to go right at it as a powerlifter. We had some athlete do that last year. You can use straps, but not the figure of eights. You can use straps, but not something excessively long. Just regular gym lifting straps or Olympic lifting straps. That's just to assist the grip. Andrea Thompson, the current record holder, should be up next. She listed her opening weight at 576. And again, this is just going by rounds, not a rising bar system, although they're probably going to go from lightest to heaviest on these lifts just so they don't have to strip I mean, and reload the bar every time. And look at the plates. You know, we didn't see the, the uh, elephant bar this weekend with the male athletes, but look at these plates. It took an unbelievable amount of work from the Rogue team to mill these plates with the Arnold flexing uh, pose, double bicep, back double bicep. Unbelievable set of plates. It's a beautiful implement, it really is. Just to look at it and look at the plates is a pleasure. Obviously, 621 is the number they want to hit. As they go through these opening lifts, you know, what's the strategy here? What's the, what's the right percentage you should try to be going for here in those first couple of lifts? Well, some you know it, the old the old adage is your first lift is the one you will make. The second one is the one you that you should make, and the third one is the one that you want to make. So at, you know these first these first attempts are getting a feel, make sure there's no mistakes, and just keep and keep moving up. Here's Andrea Thompson at 576. And that is no problem for her. Easily done. Tamara Walcott will be third. And she is jumping up to 601. So we're creeping closer to that record. Setting up with her hips out a little bit more. She's got her straps on. Watch the end of that bar. When she stands up, there's all that, that slack in the bar. As she starts to pull the bar, the outside of the plates are the last part of the implement to come off the ground. So that's, that's the secret there. And that also means you have to pull it deliberately without hitting it too hard. 601 for a starter is, I don't know if she's going for a knockout punch to maybe make the other athletes take higher second attempts. I've seen that before, where you try to push other athletes to maybe make a higher second attempt than they might by taking a higher first attempt. But only she knows where she is. Tamara Walcott will be our third athlete to lift. 621, the current record. Walcott opening at 601. And I don't know much about her training, but if she's taking a 601, she's going to be really confident with this. A little bit of chalk on the thighs. You, you're not allowed to use any oil or powder. So, no straps. And 601 is good. Very good deadlift. For Tamara Walcott. Very good lift. Pretty smooth. She slowed down a little bit, but I think she kind of shocked herself with that, the bar movement a little bit. That rolling movement will actually, uh, you know, can be helpful for a lot of deadlifts. No straps. More of a traditional powerlifting look. She got the bar to the knees and then pulled back. I think she had to control that whip a little more than she kind of thought about. So, But now she's got this one under her belt. She knows what it feels like. Andrea Thompson will be up next, and she'll jump to 596. Again, it's not a rising bar system, so they're going to strip five pounds off of what Walcott just did.
I would have to say that uh, Andrea's attempt, her first attempt looked really smooth, quite easy. I, uh, and uh, Tamara looked like she had to, you know, kind of put a little more, a little, little second gear on that one. We've talked all weekend long on and off air about how the weights that we're seeing done here were dreams just 10, 15 years ago. Yes. How do events like this help push the sport forward? Well, it's about opportunity. I mean, if you create a stage and, and give opportunity, and particularly if you put some money so athletes can legitimately work on these kind of things and be compensated for them, you're going to draw out the best. And plus, too, the sports have grown so fast, we've got a larger exposure to have better athletes exposed to these things. Andrea Thompson up next, 596 on the bar. She makes a 20-pound jump from her last lift. And she will have it. She's got it. No problem. Excellent lift. More of a classic strong man, strong woman deadlift. She pulled it up to the knees and then looked back. Laura Chalet, her coach there on the right. Take Takes the slack out of the bar, gets it to the knees and pulls back. Let her shoulders, her uh, shoulder blades rotate forward just a little bit. Great lift, no problem. We're talking about uh, we're talking about Tamara's technique where she rolls the bar back. What that does is it allows you to sit down and engage your hips a little more at the bottom, and that's that's something that uh, more of a Scandinavian type of approach to a deadlift. A lot of Icelanders did it, uh, Finns would do it, and it became more popular. But you've got to practice that. You don't walk out on a platform and say I'm going to do that but it does allow you to sit back on the bar a little bit, in my experience, and activate your hips and get off the bottom. And that's why you do it. We're going to jump up to a record-breaking weight now as both Tamara Walcott and Rebecca Roberts are going to attempt 626. That'd be five pounds better than the current <laughs> record of 621 held by Andrea Thompson. So now we're getting serious. Yeah, we're, we're there. We're there. This is it. So... You know, uh, that 601 was kind of a knockout punch, you know, trying to see if she can get somebody to take a second higher attempt. And Rebecca Roberts is skipping up almost 100 pounds, 90 pound leap. We'll see how that works for her. Kiki Dixon's down on the competition floor with more. Kiki? Hey guys, yeah, that elephant bar, I know you guys have been talking about it. It's unique, it's 65 pounds with the unloaded bar, and it can be lo loaded up to 1,275 pounds with those Arnold plates. It's nine and a half feet long, 29 millimeters in diameter, and 28 inches of sleeves that are loadable, right? It's made like the other bars that they've got, the Bella, Power Bar, Pyros, as far as the same steel, because it's less likely to bend. Well, that's for the, the, uh, the tension strength of these, of these bars. You can't make it too rigid because they can snap. And I can tell you, watching Rogue's standards, they're very, very meticulous in the, the tension that they allow the bars to go under and their tensile strength. Here comes Tamara Walcott looking to set a new record on the elephant bar, 626 pounds. Come on, Tamara, this is a big lift. For the record. This would be the largest deadlift ever. And she yes. is going to get it. Wow. 626 yes. and a new record for Tamara Walcott. Wow. Will we see another? Woo. Rebecca Roberts is going to step up next and attempt the same weight. Sits her hips, hips back, pulls the bar back to her, gets it to her knees, and then pulls back. No question on that lift. No straps. Wow, what a lift. Fantastic. 626. Tamara <laughs> Walcott, your new record. We'll see if it stands. She's going up. <laughs> now Rebecca Roberts is going to look to tie that. She's making a big jump. She opened at 536. It's a 90-pound jump from her last lift. Well, she probably wanted to just get her hands on this bar and feel it out. And she she did not use straps on the last lift either, so I don't I guess she's well no straps. Here she goes. This to tie Walcott's record. Come on, Rebecca. 
Hang in there. Come on. Oh, just can't get it past that sticking point on her shins. Great attempt. Looks like she's going to make another attempt. She's got 60 seconds. And she's oh, going to call steps it. Steps away. And now we'll see if Andrea Thompson tries to make an attempt. On the bar, no straps. Let's her hips rise up a little bit more than she wanted to, I'm sure. And that's what happens with heavy weights. Your hips are high. And that's why you have to have that discipline to stay with the hip, hips down position. People get a little excited and they start to pull before they're engaged with their hips. And experienced deadlifters will build a little more tension. That's why the rolling back technique is a little bit more dicey because you can activate yourself but it is, a, it is an issue. So they're going to take a rest before they go up and wait. So I guess I guess next would be, I think Tamara's going to take the next attempt, and Andrea's just going to see where she, where she takes it. Yeah, Andrea's last <laughs> good lift was at 596. Now, she was the prior record holder at 621, which has been topped by Walcott's last successful lift. Yes. So she's basically, you know, just only the athlete knows how much they've got in the tank. I don't know what kind of weight that uh, Tamara will select. Um, you know, she's definitely got a few more pounds in, it, in the lift. Rebecca Thompson is going to make another attempt. She's just going to take about a three-minute break. So they're going to leave 626 on the bar. There's your current record holder. So Rebecca taking another attempt. So now you look at, you know, Andrea Thompson has got to sit there and wait before Rebecca Robertson make her next lift. Right. Mentally, what's going through their minds right now is they, they just have to sit and be patient. That's that's just the way it is. You have to wait for the for the next for the next lift to, to occur. Uh, one of the issues is it's you have to be mentally disciplined. It can actually help because you find yourself a little more fresher when you go out. And especially Andreas, they've they've each had two successful lifts, so that little extra rest could be helpful. But also help you cool down a little too much. Judging what you saw from Rebecca's last attempt, do you think if she can just take a few minutes here and make another attempt that she does have the ability to make that lift? Possibly, and then she's, she's, doing, she's doing really the uh, powerlifting style, so she's trying to take it all the way up without a hitch. If I were a coach, I'd say keep your hips down, just get it to your knees. If you don't get it to your knees, you can't stand up with it. Get it to your knees, and then you can start to pull back on the bar, and if you need to do any hitching or whatever, that's why I would coach my athlete honestly to use straps if you're if you're doing this sort of deadlift because you can use straps, you can hit, you can stop, you can even let the bar go down. It's just can you stand up with it? So that's you know, um, I mean that's a style that if they've trained that way and they. Well, those plates are absolutely beautiful. We were admiring those earlier beautiful. when we were outside today, and they were wheeling them in. And for more on that, let's go down to Kiki Dixon. Guys, the plates are all machined from a single block of 160 pounds of steel. That it, then it's then water jet into water jetted into a blank, then machined for 13 hours before having the back blanchard for weight calibration. It was Dr. Terry Todd's idea to have the vent change from. Excuse me. So they basically put these in. They've got a single block of 160 pounds of steel that was water jetted into a blank, then machined for 13 That's hours the before they get that weight calibration. That's Thanks, guys. Those are beautiful. I mean, they're works of art in my in yeah, my mind. And that's the thing about this event that makes it so cool. I mean, you could roll 45-pound plates out there and get the same result, but the fact that they go the extra mile to make them detailed and beautiful just really adds a lot to these uh, events. Yes, and they're wide well, so they're a little, little, little bit uh, kinder to your platform. You know, but being wide wells and being a really big, huge bar like this, and we talked about this yesterday, like Terry Todd always said, make the implements bigger, Batter and scarier <laughs> than all the other implements, and that's exactly what that looks like. That's not a regular deadlift. That's a that's a huge bar with huge plates for all the stakes with the biggest weights ever, and that's the goal. <laughs> well, Rebecca Roberts now working her way back to the platform for her second attempt at 6:26 to tie Tamara Walcott. Come on, Rebecca, get your hips down, get this bar off the ground. Come on. Yep, 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 to the knees. Just, oh. 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 Got a little 
farther than she did last time, but unable to get it above the knees. Held it there for a bit, though. Took a, took a really good run at it. We'll see what Andrea Thompson is going to do. She's talking things over with Laura Chalet in the back. So she sets up, and she does keep her hips down a little bit more. Look at that. And gets it to the knees almost, just can't reel it in. And again, she has to do the cross hand because these bars rotate. You have to cross hand so it doesn't come out of your hands. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of athletes today who are powerlifting who are double overhanding, but they're hook gripping, uh, which is a... <laughs> You have to learn how to yeah. endure some pain and condition your thumbs to do that. Well, Andrea Thompson is going to try to reclaim her record. She's going to jump up to 631 pounds. Getting counsel from kind of an experienced guy. A good there. guy to have in your corner right there. <laughs> yeah, that's my guy. <laughs> Big Laws. He's laughing. I think he can hear us. <laughs> and like we said earlier, he's going to be out here going for a record in the Denny Stone walk. Absolutely. She's getting the best coaching. She's had great preparation. She's competed all weekend, which makes this a little more challenging, but. So 631 for Andrea Thompson to reclaim the record that Tamara Walcott just took from her. Come on, Andrea, get this weight. She's good for 300 kilos in training. She can pull this weight. We're going to watch the new record right here. Here it comes. For the record. Keep coming, keep coming to the knees. Oh, oh. just oh. couldn't get it past that point. Oh. Wow. Great. Man, that was close. Fantastic effort. Well, she left everything on that bar. She's strapped in, she's got her hips down, pushes the bar. It gets to her knees, she just can't get over her knees to complete the lift. Tamara Walcott's going to come back out and try to add to her record. She has 641 on the barbell. 641. Making a 15-pound jump from the current record that she set about 15 minutes ago. So she's making a statement. She wants a 20-pound jump from the previous record. From, so she's really going to keep pushing this forward. Again, this is about athlete exposure. There, there are women who are watching right now saying, hey, I think I can do this. Maybe they can. Well, here's your opportunity. Qualify and get yourself here. I'm speaking to somebody right now. <laughs> and they're nodding their head. <laughs> I hope next year somebody comes up and says, we heard what you were saying. That'd be great. Yeah. The Tamara Walcott, your current record holder, looking to surpass that now at 640. One. Come on, Tamara, get this weight. We want to see this. Playing with house money here. Yes, she is. And barehanded, no straps. Yes, come on now. Get this weight. 41 for a new record for Tamara Walcott. Get this weight. Come on. Off the ground, here it comes, it's to the knees. She's got it, keep going. Yes, wow. and Give Walcott it. has yes. done it. Wow, bare hands. 641 with no straps. Wow, wow. <laughs> you know, if you're gonna lose to an athlete, you wanna lose to that. <laughs> That was an incredible performance from Tamara Walcott, besting the old record by 20 pounds. And see Jan Todd talking to her. Jan Todd set the world record for the women years ago. Pioneer. Here she comes, setting up, barehanded. She's stalking the weight, deliberate in her charge. She knows exactly where she's going to put her feet. In her mind, she's done this. So she's gonna cross hand. She puts the weight out in front of her. She drops her hips and lets her shoulders rock forward just a little bit, gets it to her knees, and then locks out, finishes. 
What grip strength. That is a great lift. Unbelievable. Unbelievable lift. Let's go down to Kiki Dixon with Tamara Walcott. Congratulations, you just set a new world record. What does it mean to you? Oh my God, it means so much to first of all be invited to do the strongman competition. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I've actually watched Andrea all my lifting life, so to be able to share the platform with her today was just an honor in general, so I'm happy to be here. Feels really good. We are so happy to have you here. You did that without straps. Yeah. Why, how, talk to me. Listen, I'm a power lifter, so we can't use straps over there. Um, so I get my hands nice and gritty, got my nails done. So that's all I need, no straps necessary. You're serving a whole mood today. The hoops, what brings that vibe about? It's Women's Month. I am here and I'm about empowering other women. So I wanted to go all out in red. I was excited when you guys picked red as well. So <laughs> yeah. You're looking good and you Thank serve you. looks and congratulations on that world record. Thank you. <laughs> Tamara Walcott providing us with yet another memorable moment of from a weekend that has been full of them. Yes. You know, it's hard not to be a fan. My, my palms get sweaty when I watch this, and I'm really just into it. It's hard not to be a fan. That was a great lift. And then you hear how she prepares for it and her, her mental outlook. you got to be a fan. And I, I love what she said. Well, what event? More exposure, and women are going to keep coming. One event, one record has fallen. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll see if we can set a couple more. The men's and women's weight over bar here at the Rogue Record Breakers. Stay with us, everybody.
We've already seen one record fall here today at the Arnold Sports Festival. We'll see if we have any more. Thanks for staying with us on this beautiful Sunday in Columbus, Ohio. Everybody, Sean Woodland and Dr. Bill Crawford, as we work our way through the rogue record breakers, we saw Tamara Walcott just set a new record on the elephant bar deadlift at 641 pounds. Coming up next is the men's and women's weight over bar. Yes, the weight over bar. This is a uh, Highland Games event traditionally. This is another prime example that strongman was born on the playing fields of Scottish Highland Games. This is one of the standard events. So the idea is to clear the bar with the weight, not just go to the height, but actually get over the bar. So the women use a 28 pound weight and the men use a 56 pound weight. So why 56 pounds, Sean? I was just gonna ask you that. Well, so there's an old, <laughs> there's an old uh, Celtic uh, measurement called the stone and it weighs 14 pounds. So in Scotland, they actually throw the two stone weight, which is 28 pounds and the four stone weight is 56 pounds. So again, a clear indicator that this sport was born on the playing fields of Scotland, Scotland's Highland Games. This is a traditional strongman event. Watch some of the old strongman clips. You'll see Jan Paul and Bill Kazmaier. And they were clearing like 17, 18 feet. We're trying to clear 20 feet. That is astounding. Implement designed and made by Sean Clemens. Very well there made. The bar. So the bar is set for the women at 21 feet, three inches. Wow. Which would be <laughs> a record. Yes, it would. Denise Green holds that record at 21 feet, two inches. So uh, if, uh, if she's watching, I hope you're cheering on these athletes because records were made to be broken, even if it was in a Highland Games. But most of these women have been competing all weekend in, in, in the uh, strong women competition as did uh, Maxime Boudreau. He competed all weekend, so they're not coming in exactly fresh, Sean. Yeah, the height and the weight won't change to start. They're just, just going to see if anyone can beat the record, and then we'll see how high we can go after that. So they get, they get, they get uh, instead of having just the, you know, the one attempt at each height, and you get three attempts at each height, what they're going to do is they're going to give them 30 seconds and see what they can do with this. Maxime Boudreau is the male competitor here. He competed in the Arnold Strongman Classic. He finished sixth. And his girlfriend, Sam Beliveau, who's right next to him, is competing as well. Maxime had a really good competition, won the frame carry. Yes, dominant performance. I saw him in Quebec uh, in 2014, the first time I, I saw him. And my, my mental note on Maxime was he has a great grip. And he uh, showed that at the Santa Monica show in 2020, which we love so much. Great log press. He had a great weekend and dominated the frame carry. 8.4 seconds. 35 feet. He gains 40 inches of altitude there and had no problem and won the event. That's what ultimately allowed him to finish sixth place overall. He'd like to get that record, get down in the low sevens. And he stated that, uh, he told me after the event, you know, I didn't go until the referee said go. He said I wasn't exactly ready to pick the bar, to pick the implement as quickly as I could have. So, you know, that's another second. We can see a better performance next year. Mateusz Kieliszkowski has the record in that oh. event at seven <laughs> seconds. And we saw that. I, it looked like flames were coming off. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know how you go that quickly with that much weight, 881 pounds. Unbelievable. He's such an athlete. I would love to have seen him here this weekend. It really is uh, disappointing not to have had him here. I mean, it was a barn burner as it was, but that would have just <laughs> thrown some gasoline on it. Olga Leishuk is up first. And if she makes it over with that... 28 pound implement, she will set a new record. 21 feet three inches is where that bar is set. 30 seconds to see if she can get it. So it's a block weight and there's no chain on it because it has to be a specific length. You can't have a really long implement. You want to keep it down some. Oh, 
Just came close on that one. She did come close. She's She's got the height. She's got to dial it in a little bit. So she's got 30 seconds on this. Oh, oh just missed it. It kind of it peaked behind the bar. So you want to step a little bit further. Oh, ran out of time. So Olga comes close. She did very well in the bag of her bar yesterday. So this is. I was just going to say, she's one of the yeah. athletes who's been competing over the past couple of days here. Yes, yeah, so she had a long, long day. But the bag of her bar is a good indicator of how you might actually do in this. Hannah Lindsay is up next. Hannah Lindsay. Wearing a kilt. I like it. Appropriately attired for this. Yes. Highland Games athlete. I love the fact she's got her kilt on. There we go. <laughs> I always, I always had half to wear a kilt for this. <laughs> and he is the current men's record holder. Yes, he is. At 20 feet, 2 inches. Again, that's with a 56-pound. I want to mention, uh, uh, you know, an athlete that, uh, you know, uh, um, who's really pushed this weight over bar. Half to wear, trained some on it and kept doing much better at it and put a lot of attention into this event, particularly in the strongman realm. So Hannah actually asked if they could move the clock into her line of sight here so she could keep a closer eye on the time. And here we go. First attempt. Go oh. under the bar. She's got to retrieve her own her own weight. A little bit of a time element to this. Now, when, when we watch the bag over the bar, it's more of a two-hand throw. Yes, yes, this is a one-handed throw. Oh! But same sort of wind-up. Believe it or not, the one-handed throw is, is easier for the fact that you get a longer, a longer radius. So uh, just like other throwing, radius and speed makes distance or height. So she also, see, see how she dipped down and then sunk her hips? and pull through the weight. So you can tell she's very experienced at that. She didn't just try to power it straight up. And here's Sam Bellavo, and I got a chance to watch her yesterday in that bag over bar bench. She almost knocked one off the ceiling. Yeah, she's, she's very, very explosive, a very good athlete. And she is Maxine Boudreaux's girlfriend. We got to talk to her on Friday when we were here. Yes. Had a couple of conversations with her. Yeah, her father's a big fan of yours. Oh, well. <laughs> He's a big fan of Rogue in the sport. We just chronicle what's going on. Come on, Sam. Whoa. Oh. Very. Uh, she's she's just doing the straight in and out instead of doing the kind of side to side. I would coach her to put her feet a little closer in. So final attempt isn't going to go for Velavo, and the record looks like it will stand. There we go. Now, Maxime Boudreaux will try and beat the men's record. The 20 feet, 2 inches is the record. Hathor Bjornsson holds that, and she and Maxime talk things over. I would have asked her to put her feet a little closer together because that makes you stand taller. It's not just, it's not just being able to put a lot of force on it. You want to stand taller. And we were talking about the, the construction of that, that weight. Mm -hmm, yes. there, there's a right way to, there's some things you can do to kind of help get the most out of that. Yeah, so he's going to actually use a fluted weight. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? See, it's got like that bell shape to it, and that gives a little bit of kick because of the, when it comes forward, when it comes from between the legs and goes forward, it's going to kick a little more. So the taller weights, the problem with the taller weight is that it also has to be able to clear the bar. Mm -hmm. So the tall block weight, this is a compromise. It's halfway between the ball, which has very little kick, and a larger block weight, which has more kick, this is in between. I had this actually made about 20 years ago. <laughs> Maxime Boudreau trying to beat half Thor Bjornsson's record of 20 feet 2 inches with the 56 pound weight. I would love to see this. I hope half Thor's cheering him on somewhere. He was here. He actually joined us on the desk the other day. Yes. I do I not, not see the him. Audience today. Yeah. I'd love to see this weight go over that bar. This is massive. I mean, like, top world-class Highland Games athletes do 18 feet. 
19 feet. I think 19.5 is the Highland Games world record. Spencer Tyler. So this is a huge, huge, I mean, this is, wow. <laughs> 20 feet, three inches. I remember when, uh, let's see, Kaz did 16.6, and then Jeff Capes did like 16.7, and somebody cleared 17 feet. And then it was the impossible 18-foot mark. I heard all about that, and that happened. And then 19 feet, really? Saw the first 19 footer, footer, Mike Zolkowitz, Highland Games athlete, great, set the world record several times. And then we started getting the strongman involved. It is a strongman event. You'll still see it in competitions, and you saw it in the old strong, the old uh, world strongest man in strongman competitions before. Well, as Maxime waits, they're just making sure to check on the bar to make sure that it is indeed level before he makes his attempt. This is a Guinness Book of World Records registered world record. Mm -hmm. So it's got to be right. We're going to certify it. Stage is set. Nothing, nothing to keep him from just putting it right over the bar. I'd love to see this. Maxine was training the snow up in, yeah. in Ontario. They live far north. Like they had a, <laughs> they had a polar bear walking around the neighborhood <laughs> they told us about. Well, here comes Maxime Boudreaux, finished sixth at the Arnold Strongman Classic. Come on, Max. And now trying to set a world record. 20 feet, 3 inches is Come where on, that Max. bar is set. 56 pounds. First attempt. No. He's going to have to get a lot more on that if he wants to, to clear it. And he's halfway yeah, he, through his 30-second window. Yeah, he's, he's cutting it. He's cutting it in the middle. What I would do is reach back further and squat down a little more. That's what I would coach him to do. This will be his final attempt, and the record will stand. There we go. Good run at it. He had a long weekend. My gosh, unbelievable weekend of competition. The other thing you want to do, you want to stand up tall and sort of watch it up off your hand and continue to accelerate. So what makes distance or height is not speed, it's acceleration. So maybe somebody out there is kind of listening. Maybe they agree or maybe they learn a little something with that. But they're going to reset the bar to 21 feet 3 inches, and the women will make another run here. So each athlete will get three attempts, so three total rounds. Yes. So this will be the second round of 30 seconds. I like the way they're stretching it out, giving the men and the women an equal opportunity here to uh, see what they can do. The officials making sure that tape is pulled to exactly to the height that we need. The other thing that there's, uh, in Scotland, they use something called a knockoff bar. I've done competitions with that. And the knockoff bar is not forgiving. Uh, it's become much more standard to have a bar that's actually fixed so that you can hit the bar and get a roll. Uh, the knockoff bar, <laughs> you can't touch it. Um, and that's, that's a little bit of a different animal. I don't agree with the knockoff bar in a lot of ways. So I like it. You can actually get it over the bar if you touch the bar with this kind of implement. So Olga's getting ready. I'm not sure how much of this she's seen before. She got it up. She got to, close she got that close. first attempt. I think she could dial this in. <laughs> Hannah Lindsay is there getting Olga fired up. Is that something you see a lot where fellow competitors try to get you Psyched for something like this? Oh, yes, absolutely. You know, here's, here's what you want. You only want to win. Strength athletes only want to win if the other people, the other athletes are at their best. Here's Olga's first attempt of her second 30-second round. Whoa. Oh, Whoa. that was the closest wow. one we've seen. That was coach, right get there. Get a little closer together. A she gets right together. back to work, 30 seconds here. You can see the clock ticking down in the back. Oh, she and got that. Oh. oh, did you see that weight when it went back and she, she, when she brought it forward, it had a little kick. She's really close. So she will have another chance, but 
There was a great strong man who won World's Strongest Man one year, I believe 2004, Vasil Virstuk, also from uh, Ukraine, and he was actually quite good at this event. Let's take one more look at Olga's attempts, because that first one was very close. Bringing it far out, she gets that rock way back. Oh, Man. so close. Notice how she let the weight come very far back, which was excellent. <laughs> they had to dodge the weight, but really good attempt. Here's I Hannah Lindsay. I think she's she could dial this one in and get, get more upward movement on it. Okay, she's got her feet closer together, so she'll stand taller, wearing her kilt, Highland Games athlete. Oh. oh, man, it looks like the handle may have ticked the bar. I think it did. Excellent technique, actually, and she extends all the way up with her hand. Trying to stand as tall as possible with this weight. <gasps> may have. Excellent technique, good attempts. I think inside this 30 seconds, it's about... It's about two attempts per, per round. Well, both Olga and Hannah got much closer on that attempt than they did on their first. And so now Hannah's yes. going to go talk to Sam All Bellavo. the way back, she rocks her hips down. She stands up into Yeah, the, she made she contact really, with the bar. Absolutely. And she, she lets her hand go all the way up and watches it as it comes up. Some athletes will even come off, their feet will come off the ground. They get so much explosion into the, into the throw. Here comes... Sam Bellavo, her second, 30-second round. She's going to take the straight approach right through the legs. She reached back a little bit more. Should have time for one more attempt. One more attempt. This is a lot of work in a 30-second in a time period. Feet are closer together. I like that. She sat back a little more. She's probably clearing up to like 17, 17 and a half, which is really excellent. That's a, that's a top throw. That really would be, I'll talk to her about Highland Games too. <laughs> <laughs> You're always out here recruiting, it's great. <laughs> Implement comes far back. She gets her hips down, extends herself. Lots of upward explosion. Her technique is very, very good. And she too competed all weekend, so maybe, you know, maybe that's got a little bit to do with this. I'd have to say that probably so. Well, Maxime Boudreau will be up next for his second 30 second round. And he's getting some coaching from Magnus for Magnuson, four time world's strongest man, and he was great at this event. Magnus for Magnuson, two. Getting some coaching. <laughs> Take a look back at his first attempt. So he really doesn't stand all the way up and he's not he's not reaching back that far. He's just kind of keeping it between his legs. I mean his legs are probably pretty stiff <laughs> this weekend I'll say. But Magnus for Magnus himself was uh, twice placed third at the World Championships for Highland Games. And each year he won the world's strongest man. So that is an all around strength athlete. But again you know these are a lot of these, a lot of these events are very closely associated between these disciplines. Second, a 30-second window for Maxime Boudreau, the man who finished sixth at the Arnold Strongman Classic yesterday. Come on, Max, you've been training on this. Let's get this thing up there. Come on. Reach back. Here we go. Whoa, closer. That was better than his last closer, attempt. Closer, and he sure. reached back a little bit more. And you can hear Magnus or Magnuson out there on the mic actually coaching him up a little bit. Magnus knows a lot about this event. Second attempt. Come on, Max. Oh. I mean, he, he would clear 19 feet easily. Great attempts. Great attempts, and he really improved just from round to round. Looking at his hand, that there's a lot of pressure on your hand when you extend like that. Well, and remember yesterday on the frame carry, half the athletes probably tore their calluses on that. He may not have been one of them, but he had to carry that 881-pound frame up that ramp. And 
Doesn't look like he's got any tapering on his If you saw that, he reached back a little bit further and, and got his legs down. You want to squat down and get that upward movement. It's sort of like your sort of like your uh, your deadlift for most people. You want to get down, engage your hips a little bit more, and then swing back. <laughs> now they'll reset the bar for the final time, and the women will make their third and final attempts. And keep an eye on on Olga Lischuk because she came really close that last oh, time. Oh yes. I think if she if she just finds that groove, she's got the power. There's no question. I think what you're seeing, you're seeing athletes that maybe, well, one, competing all weekend. Mm -hmm. Two, um, you know, maybe not have a lot of experience with this implement. Certainly they're powerful enough to do this. There's no question about that. Well, that's Hannah Lindsay too. What I'm excited about. Made contact with the bar on her last throw. Absolutely. She's a very experienced Highland Games athlete, and you know, it's it makes you say, somebody's got a chance here. It does take it out of you, though, as you go through the competition. Here's, here's Olga in her last attempts. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, yeah, she made contact. She scared that bar. <laughs> Notice how far back she reaches, and she also got that weight to kick a little bit. Mm -hmm. You see how it, it doesn't just go straight back. It actually rotates up behind her so that it creates a longer arc, and she engaged her hips better. I think if she just finds the right one, she could hit it. There we go. Get some aggression into this thing. Third and final attempt for Olga Lischuk. Come on, Olga. Let's see if the third time is the charm. Yes. And there oh. it is. Oh. And that wow. was close. It looked wow. like it had the height, but maybe yes. not the trajectory. It's got to it's got to cross over. Come on now. Get that one. Do it again. Final attempt. Oh! And just oh. did not have enough of the oh. tank. But that first throw. Just got a little time. Hang on. Time to make one more. No. Wow. Wow. But that first attempt certainly had the height. <laughs> I was getting ready to jump around a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take one more look at it. And you can see how close <laughs> she was. I love this stuff. Goes, wow, rotates it back. Oh, Gets her hips engaged. It. If she were standing back just a little bit, it peaked in front of the bar, and that peak was higher than the bar, I'm sure. Wow. Final 30-second window for Hannah Lindsay here. I hope Adrian Blewett's watching, because she was a perennial Highland Games world champion who set a lot of records in the weight of her bar. Hannah's going to take a little bit closer stance. She's made an adjustment a little bit in front of the the bar, she's a little bit closer. She feels like she's peeking in front of the bar. So that's the other thing about getting multiple attempts. You get a chance to make adjustments. Nice and long. Come on, get this. Final attempt here. Yes. Ooh. Oh, oh wow. That's better than the wow. last one. Definitely. Looks like it had a chance of maybe making contact with the crossbar. Scared that bar. Yes, I know. <laughs> oh. You know, as the attempts go, that ex that uh, your nervous system kind of gets a takes a shot. It looks like you're warming up. Long arc, stands high, or yeah, people together. Did. Wow, very, very good attempt. You can tell she's done this before. Excellent technique. Sam Bellevue will be up next for her third and final 30-second window. Come on, Sam. Santo. 21 feet, 3 inches. Trying to break Denise Green's record of 21-2. 28-pound weight. Phenomenal. Come on, Sam. Big pop, reach back and get it. There you go, yes! That was oh maybe her best attempt that we've seen so far. Still didn't have the height, but. It's because she pulled back on him. She let, she got that long, long arc. It's her second attempt. And now she's gonna change up the technique a bit. We'll see if it pays off. Oh, oh. wow, wow. She did much better. Yeah. 
It just it's just exposure. I think we're going to see this happen one year. I know we are. Very close. They each improved and just scared the bar. Terrific, Deep. terrific attempts. We reach the bar back. For another year. Gets a kick. Gets her hips down. Stands strong. I think she made contact. Her, I think she did. Very close. Peaked in front of the bar. Not quite over the bar. Not quite up to the bar. Very good attempts. Uh, after that, she's over kissing the babies and everything. <laughs> we like it. I think Halfdor's in the house. That's his son, Stormer. So he's watching this. He wants to see Maxime do this. They will reset the bar height one more time for Maxime Boudreau to 20 feet 3 inches. The Love to see this. I'm sure Halfdor would like to see it, too. Yeah, the women's record of 21 feet 2 inches will stand. And we'll see if Maxime can get this dialed in and chase down Halfdor. So he's gotten a little bit of coaching, and you saw that that coaching did make a difference for him, right? He's still resetting the bar, making sure it's completely level. Yes. Both sides. Like I said, this is, uh, this is a registered event with the Guinness Book of World Records. Fifty six pound weight. Magnus talking to uh, some of the female athletes. Maxime collecting himself, trying to process all that new coaching that he just received. I think if he really draws the weight further back and lets that weight kick a little bit, he'll see some, he'll see some more height. No question about that. Third and final round for Maxime Boudreau. Fifty six pounds. That's what that weight weighs. Feet are closer together. Longer draw. Whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Good Come height on. on that. Yes. Much Come better on. height. Dial it in. Pull back and watch it over the bar. Extend your hand. That'll do it. A lot of kick. Whoa. Oh, wow. You know, he improved throughout the event. He looked really, really good and really made some legitimate attempts to clear that 20 feet, 3 inches. Easily his best round of the three. And that first attempt really looked like it had the height. Yes, it was uh, very close. Notice he put his feet a little closer together. He got some coaching. He let the kick happen. He drew his arm in a little bit. I think if it stood up taller and finished that, Maybe that would have been the last bit. Great attempts. No records. I love watching this. This is uh, an example again of uh, Highland Games, Scottish Highland Games being uh, part of strength and strongman culture. Let's go down to Kiki Dixon, who is with Maxime Boudreau. No records today, but you have had one heck of a weekend. Talk to me about your experience. Uh, it was an amazing experience. Uh, every strongman dreams to come to this show. And the fact that I was able to finish the show without injury and be able to finish six is really good. And winning the frame as well was something really great. Now you got some coaching along the way. It helped a bit. Next time, do you think we're going to see a world record? Yeah, for sure. It's something new and different. And Hafler has a record. He's a little bit taller than me, but I'll get it next time. We'll see you then. Thanks so much. And congratulations on a successful weekend. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Maxime Boudreau will have another year to practice. Yes, I think he needs to uh, collect himself and go talk to some of the great Highland Games athletes in uh, Canada. There's lots of them. Been there many times for Highland Games. I have a lot of Highland Games friends there. Um, maybe, and Magnus is even saying, uh, he says, if you train that, you're going to get this. Our next event is the replica Denny Stone Walk. 733 pounds, 318 and a half, 414 and a half. Now, this is red meat for the strongman. <laughs> I know you love this, though. <laughs> and we already had one great moment on these stones yesterday from Chloe Brennan, who lifted those during our first Rogue Record Breakers event. I believe this is uh, possibly, I think Kevin Ferris is standing up in. 
Now, Laura Chalet, who is with us these past two days, is the current record holder on this, and he is competing in that. Yes, he is. Event. Yes, he is. I mean, so it's not just lifting them, which is a straddle lift for most people. Side to side, like a farmer's walk, 14 feet, 10 inches is the goal. Lawrence Chalet himself holds the record from last year, 2021. Here we go. Kevin Ferris has had some really great training. I've watched him on, on YouTube. Fantastic grip. These things are going to be banging on his shins. He's got to overcome the weight, the pain in the hands. 733 pounds. It's not just the weight. It's the implements themselves. Step by step, closer and closer. He's got to cross that line. Keep going. You've got this. Keep going. He is Come inching on, closer to it. He's wow. past 14. Uh -oh. And we have a new record. A new record. He's going past 20. They're going to have to measure. <laughs> Keep going. Another step. Don't put those down. Keep breathing. Yes. Keep going. Yes. And wow. get out the measuring tape. Woo. Yeah. We ran out of floor for Kevin Ferris, who now has the new record, and we'll wait for the official <laughs> measurement. Wow. So right off the bat. They were opening the doors for him. He was going to leave the <laughs> arena. You know, uh, he's had some great training, and that does not surprise me. I hate that he kind of goes first, but he set the mark. The 14 feet, 10 inches, the prior record, and Kevin Ferris annihilated that. So he's holding and controlling the weight. He's got that large stone, the 4, 14 and a half, kind of behind that right leg. Look how he's lagging it. He's not letting it swing. It's rubbing against his leg. The pain is insane. It's cutting into his hands. It wants to rock him side to side. Now it's all mental. The glory's there. He's got to finish, and he does. Great, great carry. Unbelievable. Let's see what this distance is. While they measure, let's check in with Kiki Dixon on the competition floor. These stones weigh 733 pounds together. The smaller one is, oh, you know, just a smooth 318 pounds. And the larger one is 414 pounds. Those Denny stones that were used are replicas that were made in Scotland and purchased by Dr. Terry Todd. Back to you guys for that distance. 25 feet. Eight inches. Wow. So let's talk a little bit about that. So uh, Gordon Denny, who was a uh, who was a descendant of Donald Denny himself, actually had those stones made in uh, Old Meldrum in the northeast of Scotland, near Boyne, where he was from, uh, where Donald Denny himself was from. These were uh, supposedly carried across a bridge at the Brigadee in Patark, Scotland. His, he and his father were stonemasons. So that's where the legend was born. And then Jack Shanks in 1973 became the first man to go and actually person to go and lift these stones barehanded. They thought it was a myth that anyone could do that, and he did. But to see 25 feet, six inches, is astounding. The bridge was 17 feet wide, and he didn't carry them completely across. He kind of hitched them across and moved them across the bridge. But this was, a, this was just standing up with them side to side and walking 25 feet, six inches. David Lobby will be up next. 25 feet, 8 inches. Just 8 inches. Wow. Demolishing the last record of 14 feet, 10 inches. Over 10 feet. <laughs> Big Laws there on the left, the prior record holder. Has his work cut out for him if he wants to reclaim his record. But first, it's going to be David Lobby who will try to surpass Kevin Ferris. Now, something that's uh, different about this, they're also allowing them to use the uh, Fred Nichols has a set of replicas near his house, near the original stones and he's got a pair of stones that are carried around to be carried uh, I think at Giants Live they allow you to put it down and pick it back up within 10 seconds I, I believe they're allowing these rules to be applied so David Levy first thing he's got to do is just get him off the ground <laughs> no hook grip that's Easy another lift. problem for David, and here he goes. Very methodical. 
He gets one put down. He's got 10 seconds to get him back up. I think he's done on that. It shows that a guy that's that powerful and struggles with that. What a record we just saw. He is a monster. I saw him walking around earlier. And <laughs> blots out the sun. Yep. <laughs> I believe. Picks the stones easily, gets them off the ground. And then that second attempt, he had 10 seconds to get him back up, which he did. And he starts rocking. You can see him shaking his hands, thinking to himself, wow, that really hurt. And that's exactly what happens. You have to overcome that pain. Not only are they digging into your hands, the stones themselves are banging on the sides of your legs. I know every person that's ever tried to walk with these or even lift these, at some point during that time, the question comes up, why? <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing here? Brad Ardry will be up next. A lot of history is being developed in these stones themselves. Now, Brad's done the uh, Denny Stone hold for time. And so he's going to actually try. I know he's a... He's an Ohio native who loves these stones and loves the Denny Stones. I agree with being in jeans because, you know, if that thing's going to rub against you, it's not cutting in your <laughs> leg. If you're bare leg, it really hurts. And that can actually literally make you submit. <laughs> Here goes Brad. First things first, Going get him off the, the ground. Grip. Going with the hook grip as opposed to the true grip. Got them both off the ground. He's moving. Step by step. Wow, he's doing a great job. Great job. He's got 10 seconds to get them back up and keep moving. Got some coaching on the side. There he goes. And they're down again. Excellent. I wonder if he uh, Good job. Good job. wonder if he got past the other mark by David. Get a measurement here. A good effort from him, but not close to the record that we saw. The Kevin Gauntlet Ferris said down. Yeah. Wow. Twenty five feet, eight inches. They <laughs> ran out of track. <laughs> That's <is> crazy. <laughs> Threatening to go into the crowd with those things. I know. Wow. Brad gets him up easily. Very methodical in his steps, step by step. Moving forward, he's got 10 seconds to get them back up and keep moving. He's almost at the 10 foot mark, which is really the fantastic carry. There we go. I think they're gonna give him probably around 12 feet. You know, History Channel did a thing when, uh, with uh, Brian Shaw. Yeah, that was a great series, the, yeah. Yes, at the Patark Bridge itself. And I think he got like 11 feet. So even with the put down, that was further than that. That just shows you athletes start. Mm -hmm. these, these are not the original Denny Stones. They're a little bit different. I've lifted both. But you've, you've, you're have you seeing athletes getting exposure and, and really able to do more with this. Now, here is the former record holder, Lawrence Chalet, big loss. Working hard on the broadcast all weekend. I've been looking forward to seeing this. I have too. I this really, I'm super excited. He's a, he's a strong man, strong man, super. And very popular world here. Class, yes. He's a super world class athlete in his own right for years. Europe's strongest man, Britain's strongest man. This guy walks the walk, and he can do it here. He's going to have to go almost oh, twice the, the distance going. that he it. went to set the record to it up. beat the current record. So here goes Laws. Okay, keep that back, that big stone behind that leg. Oh, come on, Laws. You got 10 seconds. You're good. You're good. They're up. Come on, Laws. See what you got. Come on, keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Do not put those down. Oh. A great effort from wow. Big Laws. But Kevin Ferris steals the show wow. and basically broke the event because we ran out of track and he sets the new record of 25 feet, 8 inches.
So Laws gets them up. They're rocking a little bit. And again, these are different than the original Denny Stones that are in Scotland. So maybe that was, you know, something that has to be considered as well. I'd like to see uh, Kevin Ferris go to Scotland with the original Stones. Moving his feet one at a time. You can't take big steps because they start swinging. He hangs on to the weights and gets a great distance. That in itself is really fantastic, honestly. Well, the next time we have this event, that track will be at least five feet longer. Wow. No kidding. <laughs> that was really fantastic. Lawrence still jovial. He's happy to have seen somebody break the record. That's what records are meant to be. That's why we're here. Uh, this is the world record attempt here in this event. And as we mentioned, Kevin Ferris looked like he was going to walk into small, the crowd with these things. All steps. It's painful in the hands. You've got to have a fantastic grip. The blood's rushing from his head. Look at him. He's intentionally breathing. Look at him. You can tell it. See him breathing. Unbelievable. Just a few more feet. All right, let's go down to the floor. Kiki Dixon with your new record holder. Congratulations. You didn't just set a record. You demolished the previous record. What is that like? Did you know that was going to happen today? Uh, I didn't think I was going to go that far, but uh, I'm happy. So, yeah, uh, it was the first time I've actually trained. Well, I haven't even trained hook grip. It kind of just, it kind of felt weird in the back. So I was like, yeah, let's go for it. So that was the first time that you did hook grip out here? First, first time ever done hook grip. Uh, just kind of, I wouldn't say that I wasn't uh, confident on my grip, but uh, didn't want to take any chances, so. It worked. Congratulations. What is it like to set a world record? What is that feeling like? Uh, well, so I guess the little brother of these stones, Nickel Stones, I broke that record uh, in Scotland at a Giants Live show last September. So I was like, last minute I saw this on the, that they were doing this event and uh, I was like, let's give it a shot. So give it a shot and set a record. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin Ferris, 25 feet, 8 inches. Hey, why not wake up and set a world record? That's not a it. bad day's work. He mentioned Brick Nichols, uh, those <laughs> nickel stones. We'll take a quick break. More rogue record breakers from Columbus, Ohio, when we return.
We've had three events and two new records here at the 2022 Arnold Sports Festival. Thanks for being with us today, everybody, here in beautiful Columbus, Ohio. Final day of the Arnold Sports Festival, and we are continuing to work our way through the Rogue Record Breakers. We have had the Elephant Bar deadlift, the weight over the bar, and then we just saw the replica Denny Stone walk. We've had a record in the women's Elephant Bar deadlift and the replica Denny Stone walk, and now we go to a new event, the women's forward hold with Thor's hammer. Yes, this is a new event. They have to hold at least 35 seconds to qualify for the win for the record. These are beautiful, Sean. I think anybody that looks at these just understands the engineering that goes into these. Just beautifully crafted. I think what that shows is the respect to the athletes in these attempts. It's a new, a new event. Kind of not a new event in general for a strongman. If you look back and see uh, old strongman events, they'll have those forward holes. And in history, there's been a lot of this type of thing that's happened. So beautiful implements. I'm really looking forward to it. We had the the Thor's hammer hold at the Invitational, but that was just to break it off the ground. This is to hold it forward. Arms Which, have to be locked out, and back will be against that post. And for more on this event, let's go down to Kiki Dixon. Bill, you were talking about these beautiful implements. A lot of love goes into making these things. The hammer heads are made from half inch thick stainless steel. The handles are 32 millimeter stainless steel, the same steel that's used in the Rogue 32 millimeter squat bar. The parts are machined at the Rogue Columbus factory and then welded together on the inside before being hand finished to their current luster. There are more than five hours of machine time and three hours of manual welding and finish time in each of those hammers. Like I was saying, a lot of love goes into those things. Back to you, fellas. And they are gorgeous implements. 50 pounds for the women. The men, they'll attempt this event later. 65 pounds for them. Yeah, that's, that was a great description by Kiki. I mean, it just shows you the hours and hours that goes into each implement. They've got several of them here. Just beautiful. I just, you know, just want to go over and just pick one up. <laughs> Have a try at it in, anyway. <laughs> well, like we were talking about earlier uh, during our break, you could you know, throw something together that would give you the same test, but it's the attention to detail and the fact that they make these things look as good as they look. That's they just do. It's just really incredible. They do. It's very visual, and it really shows the quality that Rogue's put into making these different implements for the athletes and the respect that goes into understanding that they train hard and they want to have a good run at it, but it puts an extra edge into it. Olga Lischuk will be first out. We saw her earlier in the women's weight over bar. And this is a brand new event. And as Dr. Bill said, in order to qualify for the $5,000 prize for the record, you have to hold it more than 35 seconds. Yes, I, so, and every second. So what happens with an event like this? Um, so the first 10 seconds, you're thinking, this isn't that heavy. And then, <laughs> the, next, the next five seconds, you start saying, I can feel this. And where do you feel it? You feel it right in the shoulders, but also in the neck and the traps. And then you start locking in your lats. And then you'll see an athlete sometimes at the end of the hold start to shake. That means they're putting their entire body into it, their hips. Everything's locked in to hold that. It's a really tough event. And we're going to see some mind over matter right here because this is you just got to have the will to do it because as soon as you pick it up and it starts to feel heavy. Well, just go and grab a milk carton out of your fridge and try to hold that out in front of you for any length of time. You're going to find out really fast how difficult that can be. That's only eight and a half pounds. Yeah. 50 pounds. These women are going to hold 50 pounds straight out. Unbelievable. Here comes Olga for her attempt. I believe she's going to give us a really great time. I think she'll go over 35. What do you think, Sean? I think it's going to happen. I've been really impressed uh, watching her compete throughout the weekend, what she's been able to accomplish. She came really close on that uh, weight over bar. Wow. She had a great weekend. Unbelievable. Fantastic strength athlete. All guys getting ready. Head judge Carl Gillingham. Her back needs to remain in contact with that post. Hands down, you can't lift up too high. All right. She's looking strong there. So they start the clock when she straightens her arms, the referee starts. She's doing great. 
Come on, Olga, hold it, hold it. The side referee saying down some, you can't push up too much, gives you an advantage. Straight out. This is pretty impressive. You can see the strain starting to set in. Yes, yeah, she's shaking a little bit. She's going to her happy place. She's fight, <laughs> fighting, fighting, fighting. The referee and says that will down. Be it. We'll wait for the official time. Wow. Great effort. You can't hold the implement too high. It gives you an advantage. Mm -hmm. Because it's allows you to rest on your shoulders a little bit. Yes, it does. You can you can arc your back, and it's not in your shoulders. It's more in your latch. You can lock your latch under your shoulders, and that's what happens. We're waiting for the official time, but getting a grip. Her mind's going to the place that she needs to go to have a great time. Side referee has to watch. Has to come down come down. That's where they start the clock. Yes. Has to be straight out. Okay, first few seconds, she's going, yeah, I'm going great. This is fantastic. And then she starts to shake a little bit. She can feel it in her shoulders, her traps, her back. Side referee saying, keep it down, don't push up. Unbelievable time. She's starting to shake, but her, the will is taking over. And she got Really close, about as close as you can get oh, to that 35 no. second mark, 34.98. Oh. oh, the referees are bad. Oh, that is, oh. <laughs> that is unbelievable. Oh, man. 34.98. What the heck? 98. That is a blink of an eye. Oh, my gosh. Oh. So, Rebecca Roberts and Chris and Benito are going to go head to head here. We saw Rebecca earlier in the elephant bar deadlift. She was able to successfully lift 536. She tried to go 626 to beat the record, just couldn't get it above her shins. Now this will be really exciting because they're going to actually be able to kind of see each other out of the side of their eyes, and they're going to be fighting. Maybe that maybe that spurs you on a little bit. I think it does. 34.98 is the record. Wasn't good enough for the, the money. That was super close. I mean, these look heavy just picking them up. And now they're going to put them straight out in front of them. Roberts is on the left. Benito is on the right. They're trying to get Rebecca to lower it a little bit. Fighting, fighting. Oh. Rebecca Roberts continues to hold that hammer. She's got it. She's going. She's going to her happy place. She's tilting the hammer a little bit, which I'm not sure if that gives a tremendous advantage. And now you see the strain starting to set in. Keep holding it. And that Good will job. Go and we'll see. That will I think be very she got close. close to Olga's mark of 34.98. We'll wait for the official time, but. Uh, Rebecca Roberts doing a really nice job. Great job. That implement. She did hit, she did tilt the implement a little bit, which I guess you know maybe mentally, but it's it's still the same strain. And I think she did it. Judge, judging by that reaction, I think it's 38 seconds, maybe 0.49. Again, we'll wait for official words, but 39.09 for Rebecca it, Roberts. Look at that! Oh, all the way. Strain in her face. 5,000 bucks and a record. Not bad work if you can get it. <laughs> it's not bad work if you can get it. <laughs> wow. Impressive effort from Rebecca Roberts. 39.09 seconds, which makes that two one hundredths of a second for <laughs> Olga a little easier to deal with <laughs> as Rebecca beats that mark. And she's with Kiki Dixon. Congratulations on setting that record. It looked painful. How did you push past that? I think it's a lot more of a, a mental challenge than a physical one with a forward hold. Um, but I'm used to lifting heavy weights, so I'm used to pushing past that pain barrier and getting the job done. Had you done any practice coming into this? When did you decide to sign up? Um, we only had three weeks prep for this, so it was just a case of just 
go all out, just try and train as much as we can on my endurance. We did. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Rebecca Roberts has your record now in the forward hold with the Thor's hammer, 39.09 seconds. I think we're going to see a lot longer times for these holds. People are going to start doing these implements, especially if you can do it on this stage with this ride, these kind of prize monies riding on this. Great job. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, the men make their run at Thor's Hammer as Rogue Record Breakers continues here on Sunday.
it has been a record-breaking and a record-setting day here so far on the final day of the 2022 Arnold Sports Festival in Columbus, Ohio. Glad you're with us, everybody. Sean Woodland and Dr. Bill Crawford as we work our way through our Rogue Record Breakers competition. Up next, the men's forward hold with that 65-pound Thor's hammer. Just a beautiful implement. Absolutely beautiful. Kiki had described how much time goes into making these and the materials are top notch. You know, it's a great event. It's a new event, but also it's a really crafted implement that makes you want to try it yourself, actually, at least try to pick it up. But 65 pounds for the men to hold in front of them. So this is a really tough event. And it's all in the shoulders and it's also in the neck and the back. It's like the athletes were talking about before, it's in the mind. And like the women's version of this, the men will need to hold it at least 35 seconds to be eligible for that $5,000 prize. It is a brand new event. We saw Rebecca Roberts set the record for the women at 39.09 seconds. Trey Mitchell on the left, who just got up, competed in the Arnold Strongman Classic. The so man they call Big Tex is going to make a run at this event. Yes, absolutely. So I think one of the things that we talk about, the judges giving them some last minute instruction about what they want to see. I think, you know, we talk about the shoulders and all those other things with the mind. So can you think of things that will make this easier? No, you can only think of things and have techniques that make you help you cope with this. Mm -hmm. It's like running a marathon. There's nothing that's going to make that marathon easier. But the training will help but also just that you can say that you prepared yourself to endure what's going to happen. Well, Kevin Ferris is also at her. He's the man in the red shirt on the right most of that group. And he set a record in the Denny Stone walk at 25 feet, 8 inches. And he's back out here to try <laughs> to set another one. That is fantastic. He's, a, he's a world class competitor. He competes at Giants Live and great strong man. Um, but also the fact that he's here shows that he just loves the sport and the opportunity. This is an old time strongman event. And remember, we saw this with the women. There is, you know, parallel is where you gotta be. You can't yes. hold, and that's what they're explaining now. You can't hold it up to try to get a little bit of an advantage and they'll be watching that very closely. I've done this before, so what happens if you hold it up higher, you can rotate, rotate your lats a little bit and then that, and lock those in. And when you do that, that allows you to hold it, not just in your shoulders, but, but you get to put the weight a little bit into a different position to help your back be more involved. So they're gonna make sure it's strict. That's the other reason they have it where you have to put your back against this post. I mean, the post looks great itself, and that's a, that's a nice weld. I mentioned the Trey Mitchell competed the last two days in the Arnold, Arnold Strongman Classic. And he's out here doing it again. <laughs> seventh overall. Here he is, a big, huge squat. America's Strongest Man. Placed fourth, the World's Strongest Man, won the Brian Shaw Classic here with the Austrian Oak. Big lift. He had a really great event there. That was the third event, the yes. Austrian Oak, and that was one of the... Watch him fight it. Yeah. Steve Slater, one of the organizers, was jumping around like a kid in a candy store. You love to see an athlete fight and overcome the implement like that. And he had another fight in the stone to shoulder yes. that didn't oh, end up gosh. great for him, but he almost had that thing <laughs> up there. All he had to do was put that arm out and just couldn't I quite mean, stabilize it. It might have been 20 or 30 seconds. Oh. 410 pounds at the top of your chest. You wrestled with that thing. And your shoulder, oh my gosh, that was epic. Well, Kevin Ferris is up first. After that, we'll have uh, two athletes at a time, but we have an odd number of athletes here. But Kevin Ferris, the current record holder in the Denny Stone Walk, 25 feet, eight inches earlier today. We'll try to set a new record here in the forward hold. Making sure he understands the standard of where his back needs to be against that post in order for his effort to count. Well, he's already shown his abilities and strength endurance. I think this will be a great event for him. 65 pounds is how much that hammer weighs. He goes right to, to work here. 
Straight out. They're getting they're it. Lower it a little bit. Down. Now they're starting the time. He's holding it. He's in a really great position. This is where you kind of blank out your mind. You tell yourself, okay, the referee's saying down a little bit more. Is that about 20 seconds? He's telling himself, you know what? I'm going to just go to my happy place. He's pushing 20 seconds, 27, 28, 30. He needs a few more seconds to get to the 35. I think he's probably got that. Looks like he has it. He's past 39 now at 40 seconds. Wow. Come on, Kevin. Hold it. Don't put it down. And there wow. it goes. Wow. He is eligible for the cash prize as he surpasses the 35 second mark. You didn't know 65 pounds could weigh so much. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you have a static hold of any weight, it gets heavy fast. Pushing his mind through that barrier, locked into the shoulders. He's not going to let this implement overcome him. He's fighting, fighting, fighting to the last second. And then finally, physically, just cannot hold it forward. Gets the last few seconds. Every second counts. Great effort. 46. 0.09 seconds. Ow. That's a look. 46.09 is a huge number. Mizuki Toyota, who flew all the way from Japan just for this event. Wow. I mean, so I suppose people are paying attention and, and really want to do this thing. I don't know if, his, if he's had very specific training for this. Sometimes people find themselves able to do different things that They've just got a special talent for something. So that's, that's what I love about these events also. 46.09, the early mark to beat from Kevin Ferris, who already owns one record here. Not a bad little payday if you can hang on to it. You can hang on to it. It's very good. Excellent. But you saw how he really, he really uh, controlled the weight from the beginning. Locked in, looked very relaxed the first 20 or 30 seconds. And then the fight begins. Joe Stella and Jesse Titus will be the next two men out. Head to head. This will be exciting. <laughs> Wrapping the wrist, giving a little more support to the to the hand structure. Actually, a tight wrap will help your grip. You see a lot of athletes, like in the elephant bar deadlift, they were wrapping their wrists for the deadlift. An old trick. <laughs> I believe Jesse is closest to the screen. And Joe Stella on the far side. Now we are underway. 46.09 seconds is the mark these men are trying to beat. Jesse Titus, closest to your screen. Joe Stella is the furthest from camera. Steve Smith's one of the referees, some of the strongest shoulders ever. Oh, they're already going to their good place. Locked in, tilting the hammer back just a little bit. Jesse really trying to Starting make sure he strain. remembers to breathe here. Starting the strain. Fighting, they can see each other from the corner of their eyes. They're creeping close. Oh. We are at about 40 seconds unofficially here. Fighting, oh. Stella has the hammer down. Come on. Jesse Titus continues oh, to Jesse. work, and I think he has bested. Whoa. Ferris's mark. Wow. And we'll have to wait and see, but 46.09 was the time to beat, and we saw him approach 40 seconds, and I think he hung on long enough. How did that feel? Did Jesse Titus. Holding the weight. He's not only using his muscles, he's using his mind. And that's what this is about. Overcoming that pain, locking yourself in, and just fight. Look at him breathing, thinking. Don't put it down. Don't give up. This also hits you right in the abs. Really tough. It's coming down. Referee says down, finished. Great job. Get that official time. Jesse does have the lead. We're just waiting on his official time. 
And Trey Mitchell rolled out of bed and said, hey, I'm going to give this event a try and signed up. He'll go head to head with Mizuki Toyota. 49.02 seconds. Whew. Pardon me, 0.24 seconds, pardon me. 49.24 seconds. Wow. <laughs> is Jesse Titus's top time. So he beats <laughs> Kevin Ferris by a little more than three seconds. Wow, that was just a second. You know, that's the advantage of being after the other athletes. You have that mark to set. As they say, there's no way to create improvement without standards, so you get a standard to go after, and that's, that's, a, that's a big plus. Let's see what Trey's got. He's got fantastically powerful shoulders, as we saw yesterday on the log press. Mizuki Toyota and Trey Mitchell. Again, Toyota flew all the way from Osaka, Japan, just for this event. He's got a lock on it, holding it. Very good positions. Trey at about 20 seconds right now. I think the pain really starts at about 30 seconds. Look at the strength. You can see Toyota's fighting. Strain on his face. He's not going to give up. He's pushing. Oh, and they're going to call him down. But come Trey on, Trey. Mitchell continues to work, and now Mitchell is past 40 seconds. Get 50, get 50. Come on, you're all uh, almost there. Come on. And he's got it. I think Unofficially, got it. he has it. He's past yes. 50 seconds. Trey Mitchell continuing to hang on here. Get a minute. So he made a very good decision this morning. Get a minute. And Trey has it down. Wow. That's your leader. But he will be your new record holder <laughs> in the forward hold. Deciding this morning that he wanted to give this event a try, and it pays off for him as he will have the record and a $5,000 paycheck. He's locked in in a great position. World class log presser, world class shoulders, world class strongman, holding, fighting. He's thinking about what can I do to make this better? Hold on to it. The strain in his face, fighting to the last second down. Wow, great effort. Fantastic. Down to Kiki Dixon, who's with Big Tex. Congratulations you on your record. I heard you're just going to buy somebody dinner. Who is it? Oh, Magna Fred Max, and the, one of the legends of Strawman. So, yeah, he might deserve it. Now, you've had quite a weekend. When did you decide to jump in on this? Uh, about like two weeks ago, uh, a Jen, she asked uh, all the competitors to see if they wanted to try their hand at the record. And, like, I did pretty good at Worlds on this event, so I was like, I think I can do this. And you committed this morning, yeah? Yeah, definitely <laughs> committed this morning. I was beat up but from the competition, but it's like, got, that's strong, man. You're never 100%. <laughs> Yeah, let's let the people know at home you competed in the Arnold Strongman Classic. How is the body holding up? Uh, sore, beat up, but uh, I'm used to it by now. <laughs> and enough to set a record, huh? Congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> Trey Mitchell with the new record on the men's forward hold, 60.72 seconds. That was a fantastic time. That just shows how powerful his shoulders are. And even after this long Trey weekend, Mitchell. He's motivated to keep coming out. See, that's the other thing that strong men, strength athletes, happen to also almost always be fans of the sport and of strength and not just competitors. This was him saying, you know what? I get another chance to compete, and I'm here to compete. I'm going back out. We will have one more event after a quick break when we return. It's the women's stone over bar as we conclude a day of rogue record breakers.
records continue to fall and records continue to be set here at the final day of the 2022 Arnold Sports Festival at the Columbus Convention Center in Columbus, Ohio. Glad you're with us, everybody. And what has been a fun day so far, I'm Sean Woodland alongside Dr. Bill Crawford, our final test of the day. I know you love this one. This is the Women's Stone Over Bar. Yes, name the barrier stone because it would be the first time a woman has lifted 400 pounds on an Atlas stone in competition. It's a primal test of strength. You get some tacky and you just have to get it over the bar and this implement and that's it. Heavy stone wins, but you gotta get to 400 pounds. And each athlete will have two two minute windows in which to make the attempt. Let's go down to Kiki Dixon who's on the competition floor with more. Bill, you were talking about that stone being 400 pounds. Well, they did add 80 pounds of lead to get it to that weight. The stone itself is 20 inches in diameter, and from the platform to the top of the wood, that is 48 inches. The drop pad is specially made to keep the stone from bouncing when it's dropped because, you know, safety first. Yeah, very important when you're lifting a, a stone of this magnitude. Absolutely, you don't want that thing kicking back on you. You want to just have a nice soft landing. And also, too, they can just roll it back and the athlete can keep going. 48 inches is, a, is pretty high, so 48 inches is a very standard height. And uh, that height has been described as being the height of an average whiskey barrel. <laughs> I was going to ask you where that came from. 48 and inches, absolutely. That's, that's why the rattan cane and a hammer from Scottish Games is 48 inches. So here we go. So the current record is 377 pounds. That's Donna Moore who holds that, and she is in the field here for this event. Now this st stone weighs 400, as you heard Kiki say. And Olga Lyschuk will be up first. Laws can't help himself. I mean, this is a very unique opportunity. I mean, a 400-pound stone. I saw the first 400-pound stone lifted in competition for men about 20 years ago. Phil Fister, I believe, was the first one. Someone else might have a better uh, idea about when that had actually happened. But that, to my knowledge, that's it. Here we are 20 years later with this as being a stone that's going to be lifted by the females. A 350 stone was lifted today by one of the amateur women in the competition. So this is doable. These are the pros. Big loss, getting her going, getting her fired up. First attempt. To even break this off the ground is phenomenal. Tons of grip strength. Two minutes for Olga Lyschuk to try to get that 400-pound stone up and over that oh, bar. Broke it off the ground. Got to get that groove. Got to get it to the knees and roll it into the lap, and then from there, try to stand up and get it over the, over the implement. She's been competing all weekend. Still a warrior. Coming after it. You want to press your fingertips as hard as possible into the bottom of that stone and push down with your feet. You're not trying to stand up with it. You're pushing your feet down. Olga just can't find the handle on it. Well, it's a perfectly round sphere. She does have some tacky, specially made implement. Steve Slater is the expert, the world's expert, I would say, on, on making an atlas stone. You can see the clock in the background. She has less than a minute to go. I would coach her to just take a breath. She's fiercely going after it. The crowd's behind her. Come on, Olga, put your hands into it. Push your feet down. Get it to your knees. Just cannot break it off the ground, but what a great effort. Great effort. Olga. So maybe she gets to regroup and she can find herself in a better spot with that. They do get two two-minute windows in order to make an attempt, and that'll bring up Hannah Lindsay. Let's see what she's got. She had some great attempts with the weight of her bar. Powerful, explosive athlete. Let's see what she's got. Notice she has her forearms wrapped so she can stick some tacky on it. This would be almost a double body weight Atlas stone for her. Think about that. That's what I'm thinking about. Double body weight, close to it. First attempt for Hannah Lindsay, 400 pound stone. Push your fingertips into it. 
Yeah, it's not budging. Come on. She's rolling, trying to find a, another spot, maybe. It's all round, but maybe there's just another spot that's got a little more area that would allow her to get that tacky to hold on the stone. Oh, made a little more progress on that attempt. I think so. Olga did get it off the ground, so that's that's the first step, is just being able to lock your fingers in hard enough to get it. Still has more than a minute to go here. Her first of two attempts. Wearing lifting shoes so she can catch the implement and sit back on it if she needs to, and then try the attempt to stand up. Oh, broke it off the ground. Great efforts. You can tell she went to the bad place in her head. <laughs> Try to put some aggression in that stone. She's taking a quick walk just to collect herself. And That's it, a good breather. She got it off the ground. Maybe she can keep it going. Come on. Still has plenty of time, about 45 seconds left. Get it up. Come on, Hannah. Yeah. Just like Olga, cannot find a good handle on that thing. So the old record was 377, so we made a 10 kilogram jump, over a 10 kilogram jump, but to 400 pounds. It's astounding. Not aggressive. She's gonna make one more attempt. First of two rounds Now 19 her. seconds left. Come on. Tacky on the thigh, she's ready to go. Pull. Uh. So again, you want to lock your fingers onto the bottom of the stone, press your forearms, and push your feet down. You're really not trying to stand up, Sean. You're just trying to push your feet down, and that gets you to your knees, mm -hmm. to get, get the implement to your knees. And then you can sit back after you collect it in your lap and make a run at standing up with it. Donna Moore will be up next. Now Donna Moore is the current record holder in this event at 377 pounds. So I would say that she's going to make this thing, she's going to make a great run at this. She is the record holder. Steve Slater is there trying to adjust it the way that Donna wants it in order to. Steve Slater's worked hold on. tirelessly on this event all weekend. Every time I look up, that guy's out there doing something. Well, he's <laughs> he's one of the organize one of the two main organizers. She, he and Jan Todd, but also. He makes a lot of these implements. You know, he this these stones, he's a master at making these stones. He actually makes molds that you can you can purchase. And and before that we were, you know, doing all kinds of things to make stones, getting, you know, Bosu balls and stuff and just making plaster casts and trying to fill them. Didn't work that great, but we <laughs> tried to figure it out. But either that or you could get someone to mill some limestone like the original McGlashan stones from Scotland. When you watch that in the World's Strongest Man, the original sets were actually milled limestone from the McGlashan milling in Scotland, Glasgow. Okay, come on, Donna. Clearing her head up really good, getting fired up. Here she comes. Here goes Donna Moore, trying to break her own record. For all the marbles, get it off the ground, Donna. Come on. Yeah. It's oh, come on. Farthest we've seen that thing move so far. Find the handle on it now. Come on. Known as the barrier stone. This would be a huge barrier. Getting a little more of the tacky. The goo that allows you kind of to let the atlas stone stick your fingers and your forearms. It's a very, very smooth implement. She has plenty of time. She has a two-minute window here. I agree with her strategy. Just, just take your time a little bit. Instead of, you know, furiously trying to work through a bunch of attempts, get some good quality attempts. So more than a minute to go. Come on, Donna. She'll make another approach here. Put your arms around it. Come on. Push your fingers in. She's moving it. Push your feet down. Oh. She's in a good locked in position. Now she's oh. making some progress. There we go. Come on, one more time. 
Ah. She's got some of the tacky on her forearms. Come on, Donna. Yeah, there, there it go. goes. Oh. 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 She got it to move. Still she 20 to seconds move. to go, but she's making progress <laughs> here. She got it to move. And there it goes. Oh. The fact that she's breaking off the ground, she's going to wait to the next round. So Jill Mills lifted a 300-pound stone, uh, Atlas stone, and that was historic in itself. And that actually resides at the Stark Center in Austin, Texas, at the University of Texas. So the 400-pound stone would be amazing. I'm just, I'm just smacked by that. Now, the next athlete has longer arms. Yeah, Rebecca Roberts already has a record today. She set the women's forward hold record at 39.09 seconds. She's got longer arms, so maybe that allows her to reach down a little bit further. Sometimes that can be a real advantage. He's going for it. Come on, Rebecca. Come on. Oh! Oh! oh. 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 Rebecca uh -oh. Roberts uh -oh. really close to getting uh -oh. that to her knees on her first she attempt. She scared that thing to death. She does have longer arms than the other athletes. She's really setting herself in. That's it. Take your time a minute. Take your time a minute. Plenty of time left. Good quality attempts. A little more of that tacky. It's just basically rosin that's had some turpentine in it to let it be gooey instead of hard. Okay. She's going to lock her fingers in, plant her forearms. Come on. Push her feet down, get it to her knees, and then we're on. Second attempt for Rebecca Roberts. Come on. And it's yeah. moving. Oh, it's oh, moving. Oh, oh. Fight it. Try. Whoa. Wow. Just had a little a bit more distance to cover before she could lap that thing, but she got really close on She's her last two attempts. She's scared to death. Absolutely, Sean. She's getting it to her knees. You hear Magnus in the background saying the same thing. He was a fantastic stone lifter in his day. Unbelievable. This is so remarkable. These women are getting this stone off of the ground. I was just going to say, just the fact that they're moving it. Yes. They're incredible. each getting a stone off the ground. I mean, this is fantastic. She's gotten it to her knees. Here goes Rebecca. Third Rebecca try. Roberts, she's got some time. Come on, are we going to see this? Come on. Women stealing the show this weekend. Here goes Rebecca. Oh, oh, oh. It just uh -huh. starts to slip and doesn't yeah, have the grip left. But two really solid attempts. She's going to get another chance to come out here a little bit. Absolutely. That's what she's thinking, you know. Sometimes you can come back and get that. She's got the back strength because, I mean, you can deadlift around 600 pounds. She's got the back strength. But then it turns into how much hand and grip strength do you have and can you pull it up? A little bit longer arm, she can actually get around the stone a little more and put her fingers further under the stone. And that gives you a, an advantage. So Olga Lischuk will be up next. Long weekend for her, but here she is. Her last battle with the implements. Got to let you know, look at all the other athletes. Uh, um, athletes and coaches from, from really around the world are here. And they're just encouraging each other. Do what you can. Great atmosphere. Everybody's very positive about these. It is a events. very supportive community. It is. Again, you only want... You only want the other, you don't only want to win or not beat somebody if they're at their best. We see that time after time. I've seen coaches and athletes right with their direct competition come up and give them advice, aid them with like, you know, hey, you need, you need something else that will help you. Even, even tacky or an implement or something. I've seen that over and over and over in the past. Olga 
Olga seemed like after her first attempt that she was starting to figure it out a little bit. Wasn't able to move it as much as I know she wanted to. Right. But she was certainly getting better as that went on as far as finding a good grip on that thing. It allowed her to get, uh, you know, at least get a feel for this. Get down on the stone. Yes, yes, oh, yes, much yes, better. yes. Oh, much better on that attempt. Come on now. Lock in, lock in. Lock in on the stone. There it goes. Yes, there it yes. goes. Oh. Much better attempts. I really want to see this thing go up and over. I do too. Come on, Olga. Just take your time. Give yourself a minute. She still has more than a minute to go. She's yes. looking over at the clock. If I were her, I'd load up for one really, really good shot. Give yourself a second. And then what happens if you've had it up and it's just not moving for you, then it feels like it's stuck to the ground. That's a tough feeling. Now she's going to take a little bit of a break. That's exactly what I would do. Okay, give yourself a good run on this one. So 40 seconds to go for. Yeah, her. she's got plenty of time. Plenty of time. Setting into the stone. Here it comes. There oh, we go. Oh, oh. There we go. Oh. She is so close. That's some time for maybe one more attempt. It is astounding, though, that she's getting the stone up that many times. Repeatedly. I, mean, Repeatedly. I, I was just going to say the amount of energy it's taking just to go this far is incredible. And she still has strength left to just break it off the ground. So she a much that stone. better effort that second time around. So clearly she learned something from her first time through, but still unable to get it to the lap. But Great efforts. Great efforts. Nothing to be ashamed of. That was fantastic. So Hannah Lindsay will be out next for her second and final attempt. Olga's had a long weekend of competition. So Hannah's up. Her final attempt. She gets two minutes. Getting some last second coaching. As we talked about earlier, we saw her uh, earlier today in the weight over bar. Yes. Very explosive athlete. Came close so, a couple times on that one, too. Oh, heck yeah. I mean, really, really close. You know, so round is round. I, You know, we talk about this. Round is round. Where would the stone, sometimes you just need to turn it a little bit because maybe there's a lot of tacky on it. It's a huge stone. Um, you know, it's kind of fresh. Maybe, maybe, a, maybe a fresh spot to grab it. Typically, these atlas stones do have a little bit of a, a little bit of a, uh, a, a, maybe a flat spot on the bottom. But honestly, the way Steve makes them, he makes sure that they're perfectly round all the way around. He grinds them down, leaves a little bit of, uh, of a butt on them, and then grinds that piece down, gets the edges off of the where the mold was. So they're really being careful about where to put your hands. Maybe this coach has seen something that tells her, you know what, this might be your spot. Final attempt. Prior record, 377 pounds. It belongs to Donna Moore, who, after Hannah, will be out for her second attempt. Yes. And Donna got pretty close, too, to get that thing to her lap. Absolutely. She's trying to beat herself. <laughs> That's the beauty of records. You Sometimes you, you create your own monster. So she has to come back and try to best what she's done in the past. There is Donna Moore. And, and these, they're getting to directly compete against the record holder. If you 
want to be the woman, man, you got to beat the woman. <laughs> it looks like they're adjusting that pad just a little bit. She's got a little interesting uh, twist this. Uh, kind of putting a little bit of tacky inside the knees. I think what that does. So they're flipping this over because there's so much tacky on the platform now from the stone rolling around there that even if they stood up with it, they're afraid that they're just going to actually going to stick to the floor more, stick add more resistance. You don't need any more resistance on a 400-pound stone. No, no. So they're peeling away one of the mats that's on this, on that part of the platform. Just yanked it right off. Making an adjustment here. Steve Slater making an executive decision. Just take it off. <laughs> then really what that does, it gives, uh, it gives more... And they're just throwing the screws down a little further so they're flush. So they're not, those mats aren't just sitting on that on that platform. They're actually secured to them with screws. So they're just pushing those in so the athletes don't have to contend with that. You were talking about the craftsmanship that Steve exhibits in a lot of these implements. And we saw the Austrian Oak yesterday. He's responsible for that thing. Yes. And if you were watching, uh, Kiki Dixon had a great report on the process of making that and how it was so stressful on Steve because he wanted to get it just absolutely right that he lost 25 pounds yes. <laughs> during uh, the construction of that implement. Well, he works tirelessly at the Rogue Invitational. He was up till 3 in the morning sometimes, making sure that there was a, you know, maybe a perfect grind on one of the implements, that each implement was absolutely balanced. There was no question that this, it, a strong man would step in, or a strong woman steps into these situations that it's not the implement or the environment that they've gotten all the possible advantages. And I can tell you as a promoter of events that that's all you're trying to do is to give athletes the best chance. And they will rise to the occasion and do more than you think they can do. You just give them the chance. And certainly at the Arnold, athletes are given the best chances possible. Yes, yeah, so they're trying to get things set up still. Yes, that uh, that uh, that log is just the Austrian oak is just a fantastic, a beautiful equipment. piece of equipment. It really is. You get close to it, and you see what went into it. There are some really just great pieces of equipment and implements that are used in the sport. We didn't have it here this year, but we had it at the Rogue Invitational. It's been at the Arnold in the past with the Wheel of Pain. You think about how diabolically beautiful that thing is. Wow. I mean, that, that took, wow, that's a really beautiful implement. That's great to just a, a, a house, a it, masterpiece. It, it's fun to look at, but you do not want to push that. Thing. No, it is tough. They're getting the had situation taken care of here. There was so much tacky, you could see that the athletes were kind of sticking to it. So mm -hmm. if they actually got the if they actually got the stone up, they were looking at you know does a does a shoe get stuck? Right. And as Kiki said, safety first, mm -hmm. right? And again, that thing is heavy enough. You don't need any more resistance on it. No, no. I think this is okay. This gives the athletes a little extra time to sort of mm -hmm. collect themselves a little bit. They're exerting maximal effort on each one of these attempts. And we still have three women left to make their second attempts. That's Hannah Lindsay, and she's just been trying to stay in the zone here as all this maintenance work has been going on. Trust me, this time's probably going to help her a little bit because once you get into that two-minute time frame, it's just furious. Here she comes. Going back to the smelling salts. There we go. Get herself focused. Look at this stage. Weight over bar, record deadlifts, stones for distance, Denny Stone walk for distance, Atlas stones. You just can't make this up. This is so great. There's the current record holder, Donna Moore. 377 pounds was her best mark. Okay, let's we see what you've set. got. Here goes Hannah Lindsay. Get your fingers into the stone. Get it to your lap. Come on now. Oh. 
And again, you're really not trying to stand up with it. You just push your feet right. down. That way you can keep a silent upper body position for the most part, and, you're, and your upper body's locked into the stone. Still a minute 30 to go for Hannah in this second two-minute window. And it's nice and cool here in the arena, so the, the tacky should be setting up pretty well. That's, a, that's you know, if it's, if it's warm outside or warm in the arena, tacky can actually really be a disadvantage because it becomes slippery instead of sticky. All right, come on, Hannah. Big attempt. Come on, that's it. Got her hands well under it. Not able to break it off the ground on that attempt. She's going, she's doing the math in her head. Do I have it to try one more time? Has about 45 seconds remaining. As a competitor, though, she's going to come back to it. She'll take another crack at it. What do I do, coach? Still not giving up. Take that other attempt. Go at it. All right, Hannah. See what you've got. Get your hands under this thing. Ah. Great run at it. Great competitor. Handle Lindsay on her second attempt. These She's unable to make it happen, and that'll bring up Donna Moore for her second attempt. Yes, the record holder, 377 pounds. You know, the, the round stones are... Um, there's no handle on them like a natural stone. And so there are people who are great at the Atlas stones. Maybe they're longer arms and they can get their hands around them. Maybe not such a great natural stone lifter. So this goes to, you know, two different directions. If this were a natural stone, uh, you know, with some, some kind of some handles on it, you know, possibly, I don't know. But also two natural stones, we traditionally, just like with the uh, tombstone used yesterday, we don't allow tacky with that. Right. So Donna Moore is the record holder at 377 pound Atlas stone, which is still mind boggling, unbelievable weight, unbelievable lift. Donna Moore taking some time to just get some last second advice here on, on maybe where best to orient that thing. Yeah. Orientate that stone the correct way so she can get that. Maybe just get a chance of getting her fingers underneath it. Yes. But the last uh, attempt that she took, she did a really Nice job of breaking it off the ground, but then she just couldn't lock that in to get it to her lap. Yeah, it, it gets stuck at the knees, and that's the that's the first barrier that you have to do. One, get it off the ground. Two, get it to the knees so that you can get it over the knees and into the lap, and then the fight to stand up with it. Come on, come on. Here goes Donna Moore. It's coming off the floor. Come on. Go, come on. We really want to see this. Come there on. it goes. Pulling. And you want to keep, you want to keep your arms straight. You have the a lot of people have a tendency you want to bend their arms and kind of cr sort of cradle it. You do not want to do Does that. Does that help you then roll it into the lap more effectively? Well, if you if you start the lift with bent arms, you're just begging for a bicep or yeah. forearm injury, and that's exactly what you don't want to do. So you want long arms all the way around. Dig in with the fingers off the ground. Come on, Donna, you're right there. The tacky set up on her hands really nicely. Still more than a minute to go for Donna Moore. Push your feet down. Still got a minute. This probably feels like an eternity to her. She's battling in this thing for two minutes at a time. Less than a minute now for Donna Moore. Getting some last second instruction. Getting some smelling salts going. 
30 seconds to go for Donna Moore. That's and now she's making mark. some progress. Uh. Fifteen seconds. Maybe one time run. to make one more one run. More run at this. Oh, oh, just can't quite get it up. Great job, though. Great job. Still the current record holder at 377. So she yes. does have that to fall back on. A really good effort. <laughs> Great effort. Now we got Rebecca Roberts back up. It's got so much tacky on it. She high fives someone. She's going to stick to him. Well, what happens too? That tacky gets stuck to the forearms, and look, it just will take the skin right yeah. off. That superficial layer of skin says bye bye. So Rebecca Roberts will be the last woman out, and she got really close to at least Very getting close. it to her knees and maybe being able to roll it into the lap. Yes, I mean she really had, she really had that stone right to the knees, and she's got those longer arms. Maybe she can set set her arms around it. She gets it to her knees and then to the lap. Then we've got a shot at it. There goes Rebecca Roberts, who already has one record here today in the women's forward hold. Looking for a second one here, if she can somehow manage to get that 400-pound stone up and over, and that was so close. She's just breaking that oh. stone right off. This after a heavy deadlift. Lots of tacky. <laughs> I always said if you got tacky on your hands or chalk on your hands that day, it was a good day. <laughs> <laughs> no day can be bad if you've been training. Connor, Rebecca. She's also wearing a lifting belt. Well, and smartly taking her time. You know, yes, just, I agree with the strategy. Yeah. Instead of frantically. She was so close the last yes. time. And, you know, some athletes, the, the coming off the ground is the hard part. Some athletes get it to the lap and it's done. You know, sort of like a clean and jerk. Some people struggle to get it to their shoulders and then it's hard. Here we, Here go. we go. Oh, oh, come and on. Walk back. Roberts is close. Oh, oh, come on. oh, oh, oh. man, was that close. So close. So close. Oh, she's waving it off. No, we don't. We don't want you to wave it off. Oh. Try one more time. Oh Man, that was the closest attempt that we have seen so yes. far. I mean, she was inches away from being able to roll that into her lap. This stone will go down. Someone will lift the, some, some woman will come and lift a 400 pound Atlas stone. A lot of attempts that broke this off the ground and she scared that thing to death. Man. I thought she was going to get it to her lap. That was impressive from Rebecca Roberts and you know she's probably going to go back home and and trade hard on that train hard on that because it was super close. Look at the mail uh, the uh, Maelstrom in they're just shaking their head like this is incredible. You know, we talked before we started here about how events like this grow the sport of strongman. And, yes. and after watching you know what we saw here today you got to think that, like you said earlier, there's someone out there that's going to go start picking up some heavy stuff to see if maybe one day they could be out here. Absolutely. We're talking to somebody right now, and she's going, I'm, she's shaking her head, maybe a few of them. I want to try this. I think I can do this. Go out and start training. That's all you need to do. Just go start training. So this exposure is going to continue to bring in more and more athletes. And we're going to see the bar go up and up and up. But this is a fantastic effort by them. Well, you have a year out there to start training, and maybe next year you can be here on the Rogue Record Breakers stage. Thank you so much for being with us today. It was a blast being able to call this action and share some of these great moments with you. For Dr. Bill Crawford, I'm Sean Woodland. Big thanks to Rogue for putting on this event. We will see you next year at the 2023 Arnold Sports Festival.